we know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can change forms. And if we relate that concept to Bernoulli's equation, we can imagine Bernoulli's equation as an energy equation that represents partitioning of energy. And because we're only talking about steady, inviscid, and incompressible flow, what we can say is that the total energy remains constant along a streamline. The concept of uh, different kinds of heads was also introduced in previous videos uh, in which we saw how the Bernoulli's equation can be given this kind of form where you've got each of these terms that has a unit of length so this entire term has a unit of meters then this entire term is going to have the unit of meters and the last term as well and all of these represent a certain types a type of head so the, what the Bernoulli's equation says is that the sum of all of these heads the sum of so this is your pressure head here and then you've got your velocity head and then you've got the elevation head here so the sum of all of these heads the sum of the pressure head the velocity head and the elevation head is constant along the streamline and this total constant this constant is known as the total head which is represented by h here now sometimes this information can be difficult to interpret so we go with the graphical form of this equation which basically represents the energy line and the hydraulic grade line the energy line here represents the total head that is available to the fluid, whereas the hydraulic grade line represents um, the combination of pressure head and uh, your elevation head. So let's just look at these two concepts using this figure here. And you've got your flow that is flowing in this direction and you want to measure heads at different locations within this pipe let's say and this pipe does not have a constant diameter as well so so say at location one here let's say you want to measure um, different kinds of head here so what you're going to do is you're going to attach different instruments um, so for example you're attaching the piezometric tube here which is this one or the manometer here to measure your static pressure and then you're also attaching maybe let's say the pitted, pitted static tube here this one uh, which can measure and give you the stagnation pressure at the stagnation point and the stagnation point is right at the inlet of this tube so the difference that you can readily see is that this um, static pressure tra pressure tap here for example this this tube here what this gives you is what is known as the piezometric head which is a combination of your pressure head and your elevation head right this is what's being indicated by the level here so this does not include your velocity head as well um, so you're only measuring the sum of the pressure head and the elevation head using um, the static pressure tap here which is connected to this piezometric tube so this sum the sum of only these two is known as the piezometric head again the static pressure tap does not measure the velocity head whereas when you look at this one the pitted tube or the pitted static tube what this is going to give you is the stagnation point over here and and this stagnation point at the end of the pitted uh, tube is going to provide a measurement of the total head um, or the total energy of the flow. So it's going to include the effects of your velocity head as well, right? And if we look at this equation, what this equation tells you is that the energy line is going to be a constant line. It's going to be a horizontal line within which, of course, the elevation head, the velocity head, and the pressure head may change as they do if you look at point one and point two here. The, the pressure head changes, 
um, the the elevation had changed as well the velocity had contained as well but the total the total head um, remains the same so under the assumptions of the Bernoulli equation the energy line a is going to remain horizontal that is we're looking at inviscid fluids because if we were looking at the viscous effects and if they were important as well then this total head may not remain constant but uh, because then there would be a loss in energy because the fluid would be flowing but we're not looking at those effects right now we're only looking at inviscid fluids right now uh, the other thing is that the hydraulic grade line is not going to be horizontal because you've got this additional component, which is your velocity head, that is not being accounted for when it comes to the hydraulic grade line. So that is going to change at different locations within this pipe. And this change may not even be linear because uh, your the velocity is changing to the order of magnitude of 2, right? So that means that this variation from point 0.1 to point 0.2 is uh, not going to be linear, but off the order of 2. So once again, what the Bernoulli equation states is that the sum of the pressure head, um, the velocity head, and your elevation head is constant along the streamline. And that is represented by total head H, and that is being shown here. Now let's just look at an example where we've got this tank. And uh, we're just going to see what the energy line and the hydraulic grade line looks for this tank. So at location 1, for example, you've got your pressure head that is going to be equal to 0 because it's free surface. So the gauge pressure is 0, and the velocity is going to be 0 as well. So the total head is going to be equal to the elevation head in this case. And now as the fluid moves from this tank into the pipe, at location 2 you're going to have a certain elevation head here and a certain pressure head as well. And now the fluid is going to have some kind of velocity too. So you're going to have the velocity head. And excluding the velocity head, you're going to have the hydraulic grade line. And including it, you're going to have the energy line here. And then once you move on to um, the point 3 here, or the section 3, you're going to have the same elevation, because the elevation hasn't changed. Um, but the pressure head is going to be equal to 0 now, because this is um, at the outlet, the pipe outlet, you've got the pressure, which is equal to 0, and we're only talking about gauge pressure right now. Um, so at this point, you're going to have the hydraulic grade line, which is going to co coincide with your pipe elevation. And the rest of it is going to be your velocity head. Now, another way that the hydraulic grade line helps us is that it helps us identify uh, whether the pressure is positive or whether the pressure is negative within the pipe. By positive, I mean if it's above atmospheric, and by negative, I mean if it is below atmospheric. So that information can be compared using the hydraulic grade line. And what we do is, so for example, if we see this situation here where you've got a tank and then you've got a pipe through which the fluid is flowing, and now if the pipe lies below the hydraulic grade line, so this is your hydraulic grade line, and if there is a pipe section that is going to be below the hydraulic grade line, then uh, what that means is that the pressure within the pipe is going to be positive uh, when we're talking about above atmospheric pressure. And if the pipe section, so for example, if you're looking at this section over here, if this pipe section lies above the hydraulic grade line, then the pressure is going to be negative. So just by uh, drawing the hydraulic grade line onto uh, a pipeline or a system of pipelines, you can kind of indicate what the positive and negative pressure regions are within the pipe. Uh, we have to remember, though, that all of this discussion that we've had until now uh, for the hydraulic grade line and the energy line, this is uh, restricted to ideal situations. 
and it only involves uh, fluids that are in viscid, incompressible, and flows that are steady. Uh, the other restrictions are that we don't really have any sources or sinks of energy within the flow. And what that means is that there's no pumps or turbines that are involved. So we are neglecting those situations and we are only looking at the ideal scenarios.